We're going to look at factors of algebraic expressions today, but before we do that, let's remind ourselves of the words where we've seen them before in relation to numbers. So, when we said 4 is a factor of 12, what we meant is that 4 divides into 12 with no remainder. And we can see this by saying because 12 divided by 4 gives you the whole number 3 with no remainder. We know multiplication and division are closely related, so we can in fact rewrite that division as a multiplication. 3 times 4 is 12. So we can identify that 4 is a factor of 12 either by seeing that 12 divided by 4 gives you a whole number or by say, seeing that 3 multiplied by a whole number gives you 12. So 4 is a factor of 12 because 4 divides into 12 with no remainder or because a whole number multiplied by 4 gives you 12. And of course there are lots of other factors of 12. For example, 3 is a factor of 12, right? Okay. Highest common factor, uh, these uh, would say we wanted to find the highest common factor of 9 and 12. We're looking for highest, in other words the biggest, it has to be a factor, but we want the biggest factor. And common, well if we say things are, so, you know, you have something in common with someone, it's something that you have that's the same with somebody else. So in other words we want a factor that's a factor of 9 and also a factor of 12 and we want the biggest one. So we could say 9, all right, its factors are 1 and 9 and 3 and 3 and 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. What factors do they have in common? Well they both have 1 and 3 as factors but we want the highest one so the answer there is obviously 3. Okay, let's find the highest common factor of an algebraic expression. So what we're wanting to do here is we're wanting to find the algebraic expression that can divide into each and every one of these things with no remainder, right? It doesn't really make sense to say no remainder because we've got x's and y's here, but you sort of know what I mean. You can divide it into 2x, you can divide it into 6xy, and you can divide it into 10yzx nice and neatly. Now the way I do this is I write them one underneath each other and I quite carefully make sure the numbers are under the numbers and the um, x's are under the x's and the y's are under the y's. So I'm going to rearrange, you know, y, z, x just means y times z times x. There's going to be no problem in rearranging that to say x times y times z, right? So this will be x times y times z. Now I want to find my highest common factor. So I want to find the thing that can divide into all of these. Now the question is, is there a number that can divide into each and every one of these? Well the answer is yes. If I look at 2, 6 and 10 and I find the highest common factor of those, that's the ordinary old highest common factor number wise which you've been doing for ages, the answer is 2, right? And 2 can definitely go into 2, it can go into 6 and it can go into 10. So 2 can divide into 2x, it can divide into 6xy, and it can divide into 10yzx, right? So 2 is definitely part of my highest common factor. Now let's have a look at the x's. Do I want to include x as a part of the highest common factor? Well the question is, can x divide into each and every one of these things? Well, yes, it can, right? There's an x there. This is 2 times x, right? There's an x here. This is 6y times x. And there's an x here. So this is 10yz times x. x is a factor of each and every one of those. So I need to include x in my highest common factor. What about y? Well, there is a y here. And there is a y here, so y is a factor of those two. But there isn't a y here. There's no y in this expression 2x. So I can't include y in my highest common factor, because if I did, it wouldn't be able to divide into 2x. And z, similarly, I can't include, right? Because there's no z here. And there's no z there, so I definitely can't include it in my highest common factor. So I've got my answer. My highest common factor is 2x. And just for clarity, let's see this. 2x, right, can be thought of as 
2x times 1, right? You can see the 2x as a factor. 6xy can be thought of as 2x multiplied by 3y. You can see that 2x is a factor. And 10yzx can be thought of as 2x multiplied by 5yz. So 2x is a common factor. have a look at this one and find the highest common factor of these three expressions. Again, I'm just going to go with writing them all down, one underneath each other, and paying careful attention to the order. Now this one here, a cubed b squared, doesn't have a number, but we do know, of course, that that means that the number is in fact 1, because that's what we don't write in, right? So this is 1 a cubed b squared, and then the last one is 2a squared b. And now I want to think about what my highest common factor is. So let me start step by step. What's the highest common factor of 3, 1, and 2? Well, what number can divide into 3, 1, and 2? Well, the answer is only going to be 1, right? Nothing else can divide into all of them. Then let's move our attention to the a's. Now, is there an a in each and every one of these expressions? Well, yes, there is. So we can definitely include an a. But how many a's can we include? Well, this one, this very bottom one, only has two a's, right? It's got a times a, a squared. So we cannot have anything more than two a's, right? Because although this one has got three a's, if we try to put three a's in, it it's too many for this little last one here, right? So the maximum we can put in is a squared, right? Because this one has two a's, this one has two a's but more, right? And this one has four a's, so it's got the two a's but it's got more, right? So a squared will go, will divide in here, it'll also divide in here, and it'll also divide in there. Okay, and what about the b's? Can we include a b? Well, yes we can, because each and every one of them has a b, but how many b's can we include? Well, we can't make it b squared, right? Because this one here has only got one b. So if we try to make it b squared, there isn't b squared in this one. There aren't two b's in this one, right? We can only have 1b, right? Because that's fine. This one has 1b but more as well. This one has 1b but more as well. So we can have 1b, but we can't have more than 1b because otherwise it would mess up this one. All right. So my highest common factor is 1a squared b, which we would just write nicely as a squared b. So let's see how that would mean the factors for these things. You can see that this one then is a squared b and it's multiplied by a 3 and then there's still another 2 a's left and there are another 2 b's in that one. What about this one? It's a squared b, right? a cubed b squared is equal to a squared b and multiplied by another a and multiplied by another b. And this one here is going to be a squared b multiplied by 2. Can you see how that a squared b is a common factor and the highest common factor for each of them? I want you to do these two exercises for yourself. Pause the video now and find the highest common factor of these. Um, it is in your key concepts book. All right, let's go over what you've done. I write them down nicely in order. My first step is to find the highest common factor of these numbers, and that is 6. Can I include an m? Well, no, I can't because this one here doesn't have an m, so m won't divide into 12n. Can I include an n? Well, no, I can't because 6m doesn't have an n, so n won't divide into 6m. So the highest common factor here is just 6. This one, uh, 20p squared q cubed, 10p cubed qr, and here 
p to the 4r. Okay, first step, numbers uh, 10 divides into 10, 20, and 30. Can I include a p? Well, yes, each and every one of them has a p, but I must take the lowest power, so it's going to be p squared. Can't take anything bigger than p squared because this one only has p squared. Can I use a q? Well, no, I can't because there's a, no q here. Can I use an r? No, I can't. So my highest common factor is 10p squared.